Mm. No better way to start off a video and the day than a good cup of coffee. I hope you guys are all doing well. My name is Tank. Today, we're going to be talking about something that's happening on the Shade Protocol. Shade Protocol, by the way, is a channel sponsor of mine, so full transparency there. But something really, really cool is actually out there for people to play around with on Shade Protocol. And let me show you guys what that is, okay? Let me go ahead and share my screen with you, share with you guys this tweet that they just put out not too long ago. They're talking about D-Shade. D-Shade is now live on public testnet. Guys, that's super cool. Let me tell you guys why that's super cool. If you guys don't know, recently within the crypto landscape, there's been a lot of talk about liquid staking derivatives. Uh, Lido made it really, really popular with ETH. And now, you know, we're seeing it all over, especially within the Cosmos ecosystem. LSTs or, or, or uh, derivatives of sorts are all the rage, right? The big thing about liquid staking derivatives or derivatives just in general is that you can't have your cake and eat it too in the sense of you are risking a lot of governance control in a proof of stake ecosystem like the Cosmos ecosystem is, right? And so whenever you swap your native or your um, original asset, let's just say shade on this shade protocol for a liquid staking derivative that is not native, you're giving up a very important feature of your asset uh, are one of the features uh, that your asset has, and that is your governance. Uh, it's like your governance participation token, right? Um, you can do many things with your tokens within a proof of stake ecosystem uh, like Cosmos ecosystem, right? But one of the main things for many of these tokens is it gives you the ability to have your voice be heard. It gives you the ability to have your vote count. So depending on how much you have, that's how much your uh, vote is weighed, right? Um, again, one of the things that LSTs or liquid staking derivatives, LSDs, I should say, excuse me, uh, do uh, against the user is it actually takes away in many times, not always, but in many times, uh, the governance power that you originally would have. It gives you other options. It gives you other opportunities. Yes. But one of the big things that it actually does against you, again, is takes away your power in uh, any proposal that may come up. So let me go ahead and go back to this uh, tweet that they put out not too long ago and share it with you guys. A native enshrined shade LST empowers protection against non-native LST gov takeovers, granular control over shade protocol monetary policy, trusted LST for users. Again, they go down here to explain a little bit more on that. Earn yield plus participate in DeFi, auto compounding yield, private balances plus transactions. So again, when you are able to actually keep the LST or the derivative in-house, and what I'm saying that I mean like natively, uh, you can do much more usually with less friction on any platform that it's happening on, right? So again, we're talking about Shade Protocol. If they have a native uh, LST, which is D-Shade, uh, they're going to be able to implement features or benefits on their platform a lot more smoothly uh, than, say, adopting a um, non-native LST. So this is really, really cool. I'm, I'm really liking this. I think um, we're going to be seeing a lot more of this going forward on certain protocols where instead of adopting a third party's uh, token or, or, or derivative of a token, they're going to just be doing everything in-house. Uh, so again, this is really, really good news in my humble opinion, uh, not just for Shade, but for the greater Cosmos ecosystem and beyond because they're setting the standard, right? Like they're setting the tone. They're saying we're not going to be um, dependent on only one option. I'm all about options. And so having your own uh, option, especially in-house, is a very, very uh, good feature in my humble opinion, right? Um, anyway, let's go back to the tweet again. Uh, the reason why I want to make this video is to kind of share with you guys my thoughts about that, but also run you through how to get to the testnet because this is a public testnet that people can actually participate on right now uh, in regards to D-Shade. So I know a lot of people sometimes uh, kind of have troubles getting to the shade uh, section of things in the Cosmos ecosystem, but it's really not that hard at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and fly through this. Um, the first step is to obviously make sure you have a Kepler wallet installed. I'm just going to go ahead and assume that many of you, like myself, actually have a Kepler wallet installed. Uh, and so we're going to go to the next one. You're going to config your wallet using the um, the link that they have here. So go ahead and just click this link. And I promise you guys, 
if I'm clicking it, I've got cooties. If you get cooties, we'll all have cooties together. I can't promise any, anything other than that. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and get that cooties by clicking that link there. It's going to bring you here, guys. And it's going to give you a real simple, pretty straightforward rundown on how to actually um, get your wallet prepared for the public test net. Um, again, check to see if you have Pulsar already, uh, if it's been added. Uh, you can go to step two, add Pulsar. I'm not going to click on any of these because I've already done it. Uh, but you can just click this little link right here uh, and you should see either use it or follow the instructions in step one to remove it. Um, again, you're going to go to this next step. Kepler will open an approval window, read it, then click approve. Um, again, guys, do your due diligence. Don't just do this because I'm putting it out there on the social interwebs and stuff like that. Uh, you know, do, do your own research. And again, if you want to get cooties, follow the instructions that we're sharing with you guys. If no errors appear, then Pulsar was successfully added to your Kepler. Step three, switch from mainnet to Pulsar in Kepler. It gives you the steps here. And then once you're done with that, go back and then go to the uh, public test net here. Uh, I should say, maybe you're going to have to go actually get uh, some tokens for the public test net. So excuse me, I almost skipped a step. Step three here, visit the secret network test net faucet uh, where you can grab some of these test net tokens. So again, click the hyperlink. It's going to bring you to the faucet uh, page. You're just going to go ahead and add in your um, your secret address. And you can only do this uh, every 24 hours. So it's, you can't just like keep spamming and getting more and more uh, testnet tokens. Um, but go ahead and do that. Once you're done with that, go to the testnet protocol site. You're going to click it. It's going to ask you for a password. Again, I shared with you guys the password earlier. It's Sparta. This is Sparta. We're going to copy it here. We're going to go here. I've already um, clicked my password, so it's going to bring me into here. But you should normally see uh, a little section where it's going to ask you to put in your um, your uh, testnet password. Um, obviously, I already did it, so I'm going to be just landing on the page. Uh, but you'll be able to see that you're on the testnet by checking the address above. It should start with testnet.shadeprotocol. Um, once you've verified all of that, you're going to go ahead and go into your portfolio uh, and you're going to have to generate some viewing keys. You can see that I've already done that. It's real simple though, guys. All you have to go is to this derivative section once you've done everything else and then get yourself some shade, right? Once you have some shade, then you can go here and you can swap for D shade. I'm going to go ahead and swap. I'm going to sign a transaction here, approving it. Bada bing, bada boom. Look at this APY, by the way. And don't get all excited. It's, it's just testnet, right? But it's 2,851%. Oh, I miss those days. Do you guys miss those days? You guys know what I'm talking about. All you OG Cosmos people, you know what I'm talking about. There was once a time when that was actual real and this wasn't testnet stuff. Um, but you can see that we've swapped here. Uh, we'll go back to our portfolio. You can see that I now have me some D-shade and bada bing, bada boom, right? Now I'm ready to take my LST, excuse me, I got an itchy nose, my LST and my shade and whatever else that I have on the shade protocol, uh, right? And I can go ahead and start testing uh, and getting in to some of the things uh, that they're going to be offering. Now, right now, again, this is just testnet. Not all of the features are available, uh, but they're going to be having more and more, obviously, as it um, progresses. Uh, but yeah, guys, I'm going to be able to go ahead and like maybe pair some of my shade, D shade, uh, my D shade with silk or, uh, you know, uh, S shade or I'm sorry, S secret or secret. Uh, there's probably going to be a number of things that we can do here. But obviously, right now, this is the only thing that's uh, showing you showing for us right now. And that's it. That It's really, really easy and simple to get there and participate, guys. Definitely check out the Testnet for Shade protocol. With that being said, I hope you guys all have a great day. Peace.